So I have finished watching the movie Your Name for the first time and it was incredible. I went into this knowing practically nothing about it. I knew that it was a body swap and that it was emotional and I knew nothing else and it blew me out of the water. First of all, from the jump, the animation is gorgeous. This is the most visually stunning movie I think I've probably ever seen. From the beginning where we see this meteor, it's stunning, but then we have scenes of nature, the fall leaves, we have just around every corner this movie is breathtaking. Along with that, the pacing in this movie is brilliant. It gives us just the right amount of time to give us those personal moments that attach us to the characters, the the emotional beats that packed the perfect amount of punch, the the tension, the, the size of relief with humor or with slice of life, just a little bit of peace to breathe before we move on to the next big thing. It, I never was bored. I never felt like anything was rushed. I never felt lacking in anything. And with the pacing that lended to be, being able to perfectly hit all those emotional beats along with the animation that was so stunning and that drew so much emotion out just visually, also the score was incredible. It matched the scene so well and those big emotional moments, the score that underscored it, that went behind it all, emphasized each moment perfectly. It was just from the jump constructed so beautifully that just with that opening scene before we even really got into the story, I was already completely stole, sold. And this is coming from someone who doesn't watch movies or TV shows or anything. I'm really trying hard to get into anime, but I am a reader first and foremost always. And so I'm always going to choose the manga or the book before I'm going to choose the movie or the show, no matter which one came first. But this is a story that I genuinely think, I think, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is a manga or if it's a light novel or if there is I haven't looked into this really at all. But if there is a reading companion to this movie, I feel completely confident that it wouldn't have the same impact because this was a masterpiece. So anyway, let's talk about the story itself and this will be, there will be spoilers. So you've been warned if you haven't watched it yet, please do. I couldn't recommend it enough. So right off the bat, we have, as I said, a very impactful start with the visuals, with the score, with so many things that are beautiful to draw me in just from a technical perspective, but then we get into the story and I'm thoroughly confused. We start off with her groping herself, but then also having memory loss. And I knew this was body swap, but I also couldn't figure out, <laughs> did she start in her own body? It seems like she didn't, but now she's in her body. What what are we doing here? And then we've got him doing the same stuff. And I, I, even though I knew it was body swap, I was thoroughly confused at the beginning, but I was able to just roll with it because it was so charming anyway. Going through their life and their routines and getting to know them as well as their friends while also establishing, yeah, you were weird yesterday, so kind of hinting at the body swap elements that are going on, it had such a such a lighthearted charm to it that I was able to easily just kind of let go and get swept up in the story knowing that the pieces would fall together eventually. We're overwhelmed along with the characters and we realize pretty quickly that we have started out partially into the story already. The body swap has already happened. Things have already begun and we're hopping in a little bit late. And so we have to do a little bit of extra catch up, but we're able to figure it out alongside them as they're leaving each other. He left her that question in the notebook and then they started, uh, she found his journal entries on his phone and he had journal, physical journal entries as well. And they started communicating with each other, establishing rules, what they could, uh, what they could do, what he, she needed to stop eating so much and spending all of his money, what kind of relationship boundaries they could have because they started kind of tampering with the way they were interacting with the environment around them, writing each other notes on, in, in the physical as well as on <laughs> themselves physically, idiot or dummy on their faces, which was so fun. So you had the obvious distinguishers about them, like their personal preferences or the way they interacted with their friends or how confused they were, but you also had the really subtle distinguishers, like how uh, how differently they acted. Like when Taki was in Mitsuha's body, uh, she would run in a much more masculine way, or when Mitsuha was in Taki's body, he would have a much more delicate and feminine kind of gait. Uh, just the same, their mannerisms, Taki would blush a lot more. He would kind of like hold himself closer when he was interacting with other people. He was a lot 
lot sweeter and gentler. And uh, Taki was in Mitsuha's body when people were kind of talking behind her back, but she could overhear it. He, he stood up. Well, he didn't stand up. He kicked over a table and stood up to her father and was much more bold and assertive. And because of that, they both started garnering attention that was a little bit unwanted from their peers. Taki had a long-standing crush on one of his co-workers, or she might have been his superior. I'm not I'm not recalling what the power dynamic there was, but he had a crush on someone that he worked with and uh, everybody did because she's gorgeous. How could you not? Uh, but no one ever made any headway with her until Mitsuha was in his body and she helped her with her skirt and she was very kind and gentle and she saw something tender in him that she didn't see before. Much the same, Taki in Mitsuha's body was getting attention from men and women as I guess he was acting a little bit more more standoffish and a little bit more confident and assertive and that that drew people's attention and they were both like stop messing with my personal relationships. So we got to watch them be really overwhelmed in each other's bodies and in each other's lives and we got to see them figure out what the day-to-day -day life was and what their routines were as well as how to help each other and how and they were able to connect and communicate over that and really get to know each other in a really personal, intimate way. And very quickly, we saw them go from being overwhelmed to being comfortable to falling in love. And this is a story about two really different people from two really different areas. One that's very entrenched in culture and tradition and a much slower and quiet way of life, but Mitsuha was still very isolated because of her family dynamics, because of her shyness. She was still kind of on the outskirts. And and then you had Taki, who was in a bustling city of the bustling city of Tokyo. He was constantly surrounded by people. He had a really fast-paced job, and yet he was still very isolated. This movie did such an amazing job at very quickly helping us to get to know both Taki and Mitsuha's very person or very unique personalities and to get really attached to both of them. But it also did an amazing job at establishing really unique side characters very quickly without messing up the pacing. I adore Taki's friends. The way they seem so baffled at Taki's change, but still helpful and kind and kind of rolling with it no matter what was going on and that eventually evolved into his old crush also joining the friend group and her dynamic when they went on the road and uh, tried to find Mitsuha with him. And just the same, Mitsuha's friends were so supportive and they were so on board with helping her. They too rolled with the punches when Taki was in her body, but then when they realized that their whole town was potentially about to be destroyed, they were right there with her, risking everything to save everything. And I loved her friends as well. I think that it's really easy for a story like this that's very quick and very uh, closely focused on the two to kind of have other characters be a dressing piece, but the characters, the side, character were, side characters were so quickly given just the right amount of depth, but then also in Grandma, we get to learn about the cultures and the traditions and the thing, the magical spiritual thread that actually tied them together and the history behind it. We got to learn all that through her and through her bond with her grandmother and eventually seeing that Mitsuha isn't the only one that this has happened to, though it is happening in a unique unique way for her. So it starts off as this lighthearted, charming, confusing movie that's just so fun that it's okay to just roll with it until things fall into place. But then once they do fall into place, it feels like such a gut punch. When he travels with his friends to try to find Mitsuha and he's having so much trouble with it and then finally realizes that this town is the one that's completely gone now, that it was wiped out by a meteor three years ago. And then they actually go to the place and they see for themselves that yes, this is where I was, but it's gone. And then he starts seeking out further information and he finds the list of those that died in the in this natural disaster and her name is on the list. It it was so I I didn't realize we were dealing in different timelines. I had no idea and the reveal absolutely killed me. I actually had to stop. So the way that I watched this was I started it out on my own and I got to the twist and then I just had to pause it and I had to go 
go for a walk and breathe for a while. Like I couldn't, I needed a break because I was so invested in the story, so quietly, sneakily invested. I mean, I knew I was enjoying myself, but I didn't realize how attached I had become until I realized that it was devastating and that they were never gonna find each other according to this point in the story where I was and I, my realizations here at this twist. And there was no hope and she was gone. And then I just couldn't keep, I needed a break. <laughs> so I paused it, I went for a walk, I came back from my walk and I set up a watch party uh, on my Discord so we could all watch the movie together because I just needed some support. So then I rewatched the first half and then finally finished the ending with, um, with everybody. But it's just really impressive that such a lighthearted, charming, confusing story could still manage to invest me so heavily just in the first half that that twist hit me so hard that I didn't want to continue by myself. I needed some I needed some friends around me to make it through. So skipping forward to the point where they actually meet. So Taki has gone to the shrine. He's he drank the sake. They called it something else. It might not actually he drank the thing that she, the fermented thing that she made that has a piece of herself in it. He drank it and then they go up to the area and they walk past each other and then, and you see the thread, you see the little, the little rope, the tie, the thread, the thing, you know, like the red tie that is around your finger and it ties you to the person that myth, I assume that's what they were playing off of. Anyway, you see it for a flash and then they can see each other at twilight. Oh my goodness! And it's incredible how effective this first meeting actually was for them because we've spent so much time seeing them get to know each other's lives and get to know the each other's friends and family and and communicate back and forth in these journal entries and and kind of play off of each other so much that we've built up such a such a strong serious relationship between them that when they actually physically meet for the first time it's so emotional and tender and sweet and we I am so invested in seeing the two of them together we already know that their chemistry is there but also that it's so much deeper it's a true understanding of the other person and a true appreciation and and love for the other one's life and self we get a little bit of humor, we see them bickering, there's awkwardness and shyness, and then we finally see that uh, that cord, that thread, that he, ribbon, that he's been keeping around his wrist all this time, and we find out that because their timelines are different, because they don't quite match up, she too has already gone looking for him. She too has already decided, I need to see him in person. This body swap thing isn't enough. I need to actually see him face to face. But she got there too early because of their timelines. And so when she did, he didn't recognize her. She thought she, he thought she was weird. And, uh, but, the, but she gave him, she took the ribbon out of her hair and she gave it to him. He asked what her name was. Was. She told him, but because of this thing that's going on with them, he couldn't remember it. He just knew it was important and special and he kept it. I love the element that these threads that are so important to them, that it's a part of their family history and a part of their culture, that they tie these threads together and it ties the threads of life and of relationships together too, that that's all intertwined in their story and in what connects them and, that, and, and that's what has tied them together all this time without them even realizing it. And another scene that I love in a movie full of scenes that I love is when they decide that they're going to write their names on each other's hands so that they can help each other not to forget when this twilight moment ends and when this this scene is broken and they go back to not having this memory not really memory loss but this thing that kind of puts them in this fog so they can't remember so much and so he's able to write on her hand and she goes to write on his and she just writes one little bit and then the pen drops. Oh, that scene! With the lighting on their faces while they're at twilight and how that works into the emotions of the scene itself. But then when the pen drops and the lighting too also drops so we can visually understand that their time has run out but at the same time that, that feeling that the light was invoking on us, that too disappears to kind of emphasize the starkness and the emptiness that they that that uh, Taki is now in now that he's lost her. Someone who understands film better can describe all of this better than I can. I realize that, but it was just such an emotional, brilliant perfect scene. So then she goes and she's trying to uh, save her people. She's trying to save them from the natural disaster because she knows that it's coming and so she can warn them and she can get she can get them out. but, 
Nobody's listening. Nobody cares. Even though, I mean, I feel like somebody should have cared when they were doing the announcements and they were doing the sirens and everything and everybody's just casually walking around while they're running up and down the streets telling them to leave. I feel like someone should have, should have gotten some sort of reaction. But anyway, nobody cared. And her dad wasn't being of any sort of help, even though she really thought that he might could. And it seemed hopeless and she was just ready to give up. She falls, she's injured, and it just doesn't seem like it's gonna work. It seems like she's running out of time and there is no hope. And then she looks at her hand and it's not even his name. It just says, I love you. I love this so much because when they do separate, they're trying so hard to remember each other, especially Taki who's like saying her name over and over and over again, but still, it, it still fades because that's the curse. That's what's happening here. He doesn't, there's no option other than they will forget each other. And same for her, she can't remember him and she finally looks at her hand and she sees what should be his name and it's not. And I think that it's because they both knew that when Twilight ended, they both knew that they would forget each other, even if they tried so hard not to, even if he wrote his name on her hand, then she'd still forget. And so the message he wanted to convey to her above everything else, if she did forget his name, if she forgot everything, the message that he wanted to be left with her was that he loved her because that was the truest message he could give her. That was the most honest message and it was the one that he wanted her to remember even if she forgot everything else. And that message, that reminder of what she had and what would be waiting for her is what got her to get back up, to keep fighting, to face against her dad, which she previously had no boldness about her. She was very timid and shy, but she was able to stand up and do that and that's what got the people out and that's what saved everyone but they still forget each other they still move on with their lives she continues to live and so do all of the people that she knows and loves but they still forgot because that's what it is. They go on and they've forgotten each other and they continue on with their lives for years I think like three years or something like that and they, they see each other in passing and there's something in them that still, the thread still connects them. There's something in them that still knows I'm missing something, I'm missing someone, but they don't know how to get to them. And when they finally cross each other at the very end, they cross each other in the street and they both kind of sense that they know each other and, and that that thread is tugging at them. And, and, and Taki turns around and asks her, <laughs> Just like with the note on her hand, even though her mind couldn't remember, her heart did remember the message. She remembered the feelings. Just the same here, even though their minds can't remember each other, there's something inside of them that, that just still knows each other. And Taki turned around and he asked, and what if he didn't? The movie could have ended with him not asking. The movie could have ended with them both just passing each other by knowing, I know I don't know them, following their heads instead of their hearts, but instead Taki followed his heart and he asked and they got to say, asked each other their names. I know I'm being unstable. I'm sorry, I'll try to dial it back a little bit. This is the most excellent tie-in to a name, for, the most excellent name tie-in to a story that I've ever seen or read. It's the emphasis on remembering each other's names and continually forgetting, and it's the, the connection of the name at the very end. The story is so magical in the animation, in the score, in the magical elements of the story itself, but also in how grounded to reality it manages to be as well, how much it ties into our emotions, our feelings, feelings of loneliness and a, a desire for purpose and for connection for someone who understands us on such a true and honest level and loves us still. It's an absolutely tragic story where it feels like their paths are predestined to meet, but they're also already severed. They're already set in stone that they'll miss each other. Yet, it chooses to land in a place of hope where the village is saved and they do meet again and they do have a chance for a future. And, it's, and it leaves us in this perfect place of that they're meeting again. There is a story beyond this one. And then it leaves us there so that we get to continue the story in our minds. We get to have the hope that they do continue on, that they do grab coffee together, that they go to a cafe together and they do get to meet and establish a life together. Maybe a whole new life where they don't get to, they don't have any of those memories and they start from ground zero, but we already know that they're the perfect match. So we already know that it will 
they will get to have that life together just more organically and without the magical element to it. It draws on so many baseline human emotions with that magic, with that wonder, with that maybe fate does bring me to someone. It hits those emotional beats of tragedy so well, but without leaving us there, giving us that hope of a better future, a better destiny that they get to have together. It's beautiful. It's such a beautiful story. As I understand it, this is already a pretty well-known and well-loved story, so I'm sure you've watched it. I'm sure you already have opinions on it, and I'm sure that I could not express how I feel about it as well as you might be able to, because you might have already seen it multiple times. But these are my initial rambly reactions. I absolutely loved it. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I would love to hear some of the things that you loved about it that I didn't talk about here, maybe some things that I missed on my first one and a half <laughs> watches of it. I'm definitely gonna see it again. I would really love to get together a group of people that have never seen it before and sit down and watch it with them for the first time for them. That would make me really happy. But this movie was incredible and I absolutely loved it. Anyway, I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the book channel, which is always linked in the description. I'll see you again soon. Bye.